Hey guys. Yay! Hey, it's uh, the start of week 15. Yes! Yeah, hard to believe, huh? Time goes by. Anyway, week 15 and it's getting warm and uh, I'm a little perspiring today, but hey, it's, it's a good start of a great week. Anyway, there's a lot been done, as you might have seen in the earlier episodes. And there's a lot going on. We're in mid-projects, a lot of spots on the boat. As you might know, when building a boat, if you want to do it right, um, it takes time and layers and layers of adding on. So I wasn't counting on all of that. I thought the panels I bought would have been pretty flat and ready to go. Unfortunately, like I said in an earlier episode or two, the tan side of the white and tan of the two and a half inch composite um, had a lot of uh, gel coat issues. So the gel coat has been cracking, having all kinds of issues. We had to redo the roof and refiberglass it. We just put some primer on, as you might have seen. Um, we're going to put another coat or two of primer to thicken it up, and so we can start to put on a top coat eventually. So we're coming pretty close. We're getting to the outside now, but in the interim, the interior still hasn't been completed. And as you can see, there is lots of spots on the walls and all kinds of constant filling and correcting and just it takes so many layers and time to get things flat so now it's to a point where it's almost perfect and i'm telling the guys i know you want to do a perfect job and i appreciate it but time is burning and very very soon it gets too hot here so we need to move it on so uh we're gonna start to put the finish primer which is an all grip finish primer we've been using a two-part epoxy heavy coat uh, high build primer. It's a local by international. It actually is pretty damn good. It's very very hard. It takes a few days to dry though which then it is set to go. Very soon we're going to do our last sanding before we start to get into the all grip finish primer and then at that point after they spray it that will be a spray. This was a roll on so they're going to do a spray. It only requires a light sanding due to its its pretty flat surface and we're just trying to get a better grip for the top coat, which is a polyurethane all grip paint. So we're gonna be using a Matterhorn white inside and outside primarily. The hardest part of the next um, facet of the job, which will be outside work, but I'm not gonna be doing too much of the outside. My guys will, and they're used to this weather. They work all year round and uh, it gets a lot hotter. So what I call hot, they're calling not so bad. And what I call un unbearable, they're calling hot. So <laughs> it's kind of a, uh, it's all relative, I guess. Being different isn't a bad thing. It just means you're brave enough to be yourself. One of these things is not like the other. Big success on me street, brother. They sent me to the schools where they try to reform ya. Felt like the honest kid who stayed in California. I'm an untucked darling and I'm proud to be. I'm an untucked darling doesn't bother me. I'm a strange bird, baby. I'm the first to say I'm a strange bird, baby It's the only way One of these things is not like the other Took a little while for my talent to uncover Discovered They mistakenly took The cover at face value and misread the book We see different prizes We see different lines We hear different voices We see different signs We have different callings We're on different crimes No, I'm different by design So let me show you and kind of walk around what we're doing and what the ideas are for the next couple projects. The um, pilot station. So I had to take out the back part and, um, and relocate and redesign an idea. We've got uh, the Lorance and the BNG components up here. We're going to put holes in for the panel to control all the lights and uh, navigational lights and all that stuff. We left a five inch base up here for the compass so we should be 
uh, cool with that. And it's going to get epoxied in in the next few hours. And right now, once we get down to the epoxy stage, which I have some epoxy on it, very, very small amount just to hold it together. So what I like to do is try to cut all the boards as I need to and then use screws to hold it in place. And once it's kind of in the rough position of what I need, um, I'll put epoxy behind it just on the grooves. And then once that sets off, I'll be able to, to go back and take it off, unscrew it, take it downstairs and start to really uh, make it strong. I'll grind the edges over if I wish, roll it, fill it with more epoxy filler, and then it becomes real smooth and nice and we get ready for the primer, redo all the wires and get this ship shape. And uh, this should be really cool and then I'll have a backing on here. Wow, hey guys. Hey, uh, I've been doing some, uh, what I consider some pretty cool engineering. Um, I wanted ventilation for this room. So, as you might have seen, there's a lot of glass. It's uh, laminated glass, and there is, uh, looks like, eight windows right in this room only. And uh, when the sun beats down into it, it gets pretty warm, even though there's great insulation here at the ceiling. Um, it, we have a dark gray primer on at the moment. It's about 85 degrees today, and in the middle of the day, I went outside and I felt the, the gray, it was extremely hot. And inside here, there was no temperature on the lid at all. But I know when we put the glass in, we're gonna have some temperature issues. So I was trying to figure out a way to keep airflow without having to be on the boat and also having to um, open up a hatch and having it pouring rain where I cannot open up a hatch. That would be kind of a bummer and I've been there before. I've actually had a boat and pouring down rain, it was extremely tropical and hot, and you're wishing you could have air, and you can't. If you open the hatch, it pours in rain. So I came up with a really unique idea, and I wonder if you'll like it. Anyway, so what I've done already, I've tested it, and it seems to work fine. So basically, I've cut these holes in the composite. So as you know, it's two and a half inches thick, and um, I'm going to put 12, and as of right now, even with the windows open, I feel air coming through these small holes. So what I plan to do is actually drill 12 of them. So right now I've got five, this will be the sixth one, and then I'm going to have six more on this side as well. And uh, what that will allow me to do is have a really good airflow constantly. I'm going to have a mesh screen put over here, which will protect it from noceums and also mosquitoes, which that's fantastic because airflow with not having screens and bugs that's a real problem with cruisers in general so I'm going to basically screen those and the way I'm going to make this work I'm taking a piece of four inch PVC and so what I'm going to do is eventually cut these pieces of pipe just enough to fit inside the hole so when the pipe is only two and a half inches thick it'll be caulked in place and all you'll have is a flush mount pipe on both sides which we'll use caulking to seal it and then we'll put the screen on and also I came up with another cool idea I wanted some really nice indirect lighting that would have a really good effect on this room and I was going to do this anyway so this kind of came with the idea I plan to build a uh, small uh, angled ledge very very thin maybe a uh, quarter inch or so I have some composite that might work for this. I'm going to angle it upward so it will have the air coming in but you will not see the hole itself. So it will be angled up and then in behind that I'm going to put LED strip lighting. So it'll angle basically here and reflect off the area and it should have a really nice effect. I can do any color I wish due to I bought the 5050 RGB. It has that multicolor remote which is as you know if you've seen it, unlimited color potential so you can uh, pretty much do any color. So right now I'm going to cut uh, a few more and I'm going to show you how it's done and basically this will be my sixth one on this side. I'm going to leave some space and start six more on that side evenly spaced. As you can see I drew a track line so I know where I'm at and I keep pretty consistent and I like to keep everything pretty symmetrical and even. Once the windows are in place the way the window or the way the um, angle of the window, I have a slight angle 
on this wall so the air I anticipate with anchoring it will hit push the air up if there's a way to escape and lo and behold it's going to hit the holes and uh, create what you see there so that's the plan let's see how it works I feel pretty confident I'll have the airflow I need and and one more thing I have in mind, which is basically the split between the two panels there. So I might make a box, which will have screen as well, and it won't allow any bugs in. And I'll put a fan in there. So you can aim the fan out. It drags the air through. I could put it on a timer. If I park the boat in the summer and it's extremely hot, which a lot of boats here in this yard stay all year round, and it gets unbearable. And the boats really heat up inside, and it, it really ruins all the rubber and stuff. So I thought airflow might be kind of nice, so I could make a fan on a timer there, come on maybe every hour or so to clear the hot, hot air. And uh, yeah, might be a cool idea as well. Cool. No pun intended. Anyway, I'm off. I'm going to do the rest of them and call it a day. So what I'm doing here, this is an interesting project I'm up to, and it's... Um, I'm trying to get creative. So what I'm doing here, I would like to make this the master bedroom when guests are not over. So basically from the edge of that new piece I'm about to install, that wall right there, um, it's, that's eight inches on the low part. So I plan to build a frame, that green line you see right there, that's basically the mattress shoved into the hull. So it's a 60 inch wide mattress. So it's going to be 80 inches long by 60 inches wide. So I plan to build a base and a support, but I will be able to slide it back into that area, which will then bring it from right here at that line, which is basically the 60 inches wide. It's going to shove it right back to the green line about 30 inches in. So then that will allow me a very big guest area to have a bunch of seating. So I'm going to start to build in today. This is a ledge comparable to the area over there, which I'm going to be using to grow plants and herbs and all kinds of stuff. So I will have grow area all the way around here and there will be a backrest eventually that will be just above the bed that I should be able to still slide the bed in and slide the bed out. So that's kind of my goal right now and that's what I will be embarking on in the next few hours. The island is pretty much put together. I put the plumbing in. That's all intact. The edges will have a nice trim when we're down to that stage of making things nice. But pretty much it's all ready for paint. We're going to do a little more sanding to make it all smooth and nice. And we're going to tape everything up. So the sink has been installed. Hey, good morning guys. Well, it's the day after I, I lost my really good friend. So I'm walking over here for a second. I'll be right back. My very good friend has been Mr. Makita. Mr. Makita, last night, after 15 years of service, Mr. Makita said no mas. Sorry, sorry Sean, no mas. It gave up on this difficult job doing these holes for ventilation, Mr. Makita said, I can't do it anymore. Started smoking, breathing heavy. I think he had a coronary attack. I think he had a complete aneurysm breakdown. Mr. Makita started spitting all kinds of crazy shit and smoking really, really bad and was hot to the touch. So since Mr. Makita is my only seriously hard-working guy for 15 years that I've known and worked with. Um, I had to give him a rest and he's basically gonna get buried today 
because not even a battery in Mr. Makita makes them turn. He doesn't turn anymore, so it's time to, unfortunately, I have not really had a close relationship with an inanimate object, but Mr. Makita has been seriously loyal. So, say goodbye to Mr. Makita. He is going by the wayside, going to a burial in Boat Builder Heaven, I'm sure. But I do have some good news. This morning, new Mr. Makita came on the scene. Yes! Unbelievable! This happened to be on Christopher's boat right over there where I'm caretaking, which I'm going to take you over there and show you what Christopher's boat is all about and why I'm caretaking it, what I'm doing with it. So I'm back on the roof a few minutes later. The guys are, are going at it. They're putting the primer coat on, as you can see. So this is coat number two of our heavy epoxy high build primer. It's uh, putting on heavy because we want to fill all the fiberglass texture. And then after that, we're going to do another primer after we sand this out. And we're going to start to work on traction and top coat painting. And so we're rolling along here, no pun. I'm downstairs right now and I'm at my little workshop outside because there's a lot of dust being made. And uh, what I've done, I've unscrewed my helm. So this is my Featherlight control center. So this is where the uh, Tronics will be mounted. So now I'm gonna build it a little stronger. And as you can see on the back side, we've got these fillets with epoxy that run the seams. And uh, that's basically what I will be doing on both sides. As you can see, there's none on the, on the inside. And also the edges, uh, where I plan to keep them flat, um, I will fill that. But there are some areas, kind of like I said, I will round off. I will uh, uh -huh. curve the edge over, so then that will allow it uh -huh. to have a nice smooth look. And uh, yeah, so this is what I'm up to right now. But also, I'm up to, I'm building the bed base. So basically my mattress is 80 inches long by 60 inches wide. It's a queen size foam mattress. So as you know, a four by eight sheet doesn't make it. I need to add 12 inches on the width and I need to cut it down to 80 inches in the length. So what I'm gonna do is build up the edges for support and strength and then also bond the 12 inch extra piece by 80 inches long. I'm gonna bond that to the current uh, larger piece and make it as strong as possible. So when I wanna move it back and forth, as I explained earlier, I'm trying to make somewhat of a uh, now you see it, now you don't bed. It will, it will moonlight as half the size it will be gathering area for friends and it will seat a lot of people. And then when I wanna keep it as a master bedroom, which that will be the largest bed on the boat, I will then slide it out. So I'm gonna make a base system that will have storage underneath and also the bed will allow to, by a big push, it goes in the ama which is the hull on the outside. And as I pull it out, it will also open up to full size of the bed. So once that's added, I will fiberglass it. Then on the edges, I will have about a two inch lip all the way around. And underneath, I don't think I'll need anything for that kind of strength, but I will need it for edges to not bend. So I will have it pretty much boxed all the way around. Once you put the edge, kind of like how we're doing with a bunch of parts of the boat. You have the deck here. You have the deck that's 20 inches on its own. It's not that strong, but once you put a vertical to that, there is a ton of strength now. So this doesn't flex anymore because this has now been bonded to it. And you've got a lot of strength on that once not so strong flat surface. So kind of like the same concept I'm doing here. My guys get here at eight o'clock in the morning and I could have a nice place in San Carlos, which is 12 miles away, but I don't want the drive. The drive's about 35, 40 minutes each way and it's through a bunch of pothole roads and all of that. So I decided to stay on the boat. So right now, uh, when I go downstairs in that new area I just built the ladder in, there's a big plastic cover. That's keeping the mosquitoes and the dust mostly out of the vacuum if I don't seal the plastic perfectly. Anyway, so there is a uh, double bed up on one of the AMA hall area off to one side. 
And off to my right side as you enter, there's a washer and dryer area with a bunch of storage. Then you go forward and I have the master bathroom, which is quite nice. So it's, a, it's not a big area, but it's just enough to live. And the headroom on the bed, if I just so much as pick up my head five, seven inches, I'm banging it. So it's very, very low headroom. And that is what primarily promoted me into building this kind of new redesign because everywhere on trimarans normally there's not much headroom for sleeping. They work into these small, small little compartments that have maybe eight inches, 12 inches over your face when you're laying down, just enough to roll over and that's about it. It's not the best, but you know what? You get used to most anything if you have to and uh, I've made do. So when I say sleeping like crap, the mattress is like a three or four inch foam pad that's pretty stiff. I have, uh, <laughs> I've gotten used to it, but I've not been sleeping well. So the idea of a 10 inch memory foam in a nice large open room with a bunch of windows, it's pretty inviting. So I can't wait for once the painting is done, the air conditioning's in, and uh, all the windows are in place. I'm not fighting mosquitoes. It's gonna be nice. I can see the end of the day, and that's why I'm working hard to get there. Faster the better, is what I say.